just make sure we're up there, okay. So then we go to the facility and maintenance. Under Lehigh University, they charge us, uh, excuse me, um, facility field maintenance. Uh, they have $1,435, $1,435 for uh, janitorial services and cleanup. Uh, for us, it would be a little cheaper based on Mr. Loeffler's cost. Um, and then under facility, under the Lehigh University on the left-hand side there, you see that there, there is an administrative fee for um, the, uh, Mr. Bittinger, who works with us with Penridge and setting up everything. So he charges us a 15% of the expenses. Of course, we would not have that expense here at Penridge High School. So what you see in the darker yellow, let me just advance the screen here for the audience. What you see in the darker yellow there is expense total. Um, and on the left-hand side would be the 2017, 2018, and then off to the right-hand side, the $18,315 would be the cost that it would be for Penridge High School to have it here at Hillman Field. Now, those aren't just the only expenses that we have that we have to consider. Um, there's other expenses that also we have to consider. Um, and on the left-hand side, these are the things that we do every single year. Um, Lehigh Valley Expo, we use them. Um, for those who have attended the graduations over the course of the last few years, the wireless sound blue chip, um, initially they were just to videotape the ceremonies at Lehigh University. Last year was the first year that we had a live, I think last year was the first year, we had a live feed so that people who are as far away as you can possibly be from the stadium, um, can see their children on the screen as their children walk across the stage, receive their diploma, and then come down the steps. There's a, 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 two screens um, so that both sides are, are shown live. Um, and that has been very successful. Parents and students um, have really loved this. Um, again, keep in mind, and I, if you look to the right of that, uh, the wireless sound system blue chip, um, to the right of that, if we were to hold it here at Penridge High School and we were going to keep the video um, and we were going to keep the, the live feed, um, and then also please keep in the back of your mind that we'd also have to have that set up for inside if we had to bring inside at the moment's notice, um, it would cost $12,341 uh, for them to do all of that. You do see I used Zero Brothers up there. It is listed there. The reason that I used Zero Brothers, that is who Central Bucks uses. And they have found that this, um, that they do a great job with their graduations. So um, that was the, the business that I reached out to. Um, each year, Penridge High School, we, we buy our caps and gowns for our seniors. So that is a, an even amount straight across, 11295 uh, And if you uh, scroll down, you'll see the expense total for that. Um, it would be $29,604. That's what's estimated this year. For Penridge High School, the cost would be $41,391. Um, let me just t quickly touch on the uh, live feed to the auditorium. Again, at a moment's notice, we might have to come inside for a rain delay or a rain rainy day on the rain date. I would have to have that live auditorium, uh, the live feed running into the auditorium so that families could obviously watch it in there as well. Um, the turf field cover, plywood cost, that, because we are getting a brand new field, we would have to buy uh, $3,000 worth of plywood to put on the turf field so that the girls' heels um, or the chairs would not damage the turf. Um, the concession stand workers, we would have to have, obviously, folks working at the concession stand. Um, Mrs. Girantano recommended seven workers uh, and at a cost of $506, and that would include taxes and peasers. And then the concession stand food for the food, um, water, soda, juice, chips, pretzels, and candy. Um, and that, that grand total would be if you take those two numbers, the two bright yellow numbers, and you add those numbers up for Lehigh University for this year, this current year is $40,341. Um, if you add up those numbers for Hellman Field, it would be $59,706. 
There is a possibility per Mrs. Gerontano of a $5,000 profit for the food and water, et cetera, that she might sell at the concession stand. So that would take the grand total for Hellman Field down to $54,706. Um, so that is the financial aspect of holding graduation here at Hellman Field. But there are some other considerations that we, we have to, I have to address or I have to bring up. Um, at Lehigh University, we can have 6,000 people attend. What that allows us to do is give each student 10 tickets for, for family. If we were going to have the graduation here at Hellman Field, that would be, we could only have 5,000. There's 5,000 seats, so it would be eight tickets per student, per family. Uh, there's other considerations. Uh, the heat, depending on the time, uh, or the day, the weather. As we know, Mother Nature doesn't always agree. Um, of course, rain would be an option. We would set a date. We would have a rain date. But as we know, in June, um, sometimes there's rain for several days in a row. So that would be a, a, a concern as well. Um, there's a concern for the entrances and exits to, to, the, to the campus. Um, the handicapped facility is a concern. At Lehigh University, there's 235 handicapped parking spots. Here at, at um, Penridge High School, there are 28. Um, what's nice about Penridge High School is we could start at any time we would want to, so that, that's obviously a good thing. Um, the venue intimacy at, at, um, at Lehigh University, you go all the way around with the exception of the stage. Uh, so it's relatively close. Uh, here at Hellman Field, we would only have the two sides. We would not do a standing room only. We would do the two sides. Um, depending on the time of the day, sun glare could create an issue, so that would be a concern as well. just want to keep it the same as they have it. Okay. Um, number of establishments after graduation. It, we're limited here in Penridge or in Perkesy. Um, another major concern would be the parking. At Lehigh University, there's 3,781 parking spaces. Here at Penridge, there's uh, 1,350. Um, that would be a concern as well. Um, going back to the rain relocation, and I think this is very important to mention. Um, as we stated, if we had graduation here, we have 5,000 seats up at, state, up at Hellman, so that would be eight tickets per person, per student. If we had to come inside, the only place inside that we could do a graduation would be in our white gym. Our white gym, our floor of our white gym, holds 780 people, students. So that is where we would put, that's where we would have the graduation. We would need the stage for um, <coughs> the ceremony. We would need the seats for the students. Um, the challenge with the white gym is the bleachers um, do not hold nearly as many. So if we were in the white gym, I could fit the students on the floor, but the students could only have one ticket, or like one parent could attend that graduation. Could not do it in the green gym because the floor is not large enough, but the bleachers hold more votes. Um, and I could not do it in the auditorium because the stage only hold, does, does not hold the number of students that we have uh, in the graduating class, even though we have seats and you know, more seats in the auditorium. So the, the green gym would, or excuse me, the white gym would be the only option that we would have to have that graduation, and it would be one ticket per student to go in that gym. And then one additional ticket would go into the auditorium for the live feed. Um, and then, of course, I go. I stay with the, with the weather, the lightning concerns, um, the overall uh, the, the overall weather, and then, of course, the heat and the turf heat index. As you can see, let me just advance this for the audience. And that's not you. Don't have this in front of you. The turf. So for the turf heat, when there's a hot day, uh, there are studies that say that the turf is anywhere from 35 degrees to 55 degrees hotter. The natural grass, um, and so that's something that we have to, have to be considerate of as well. So there's a lot of information here. I know, as, as Mrs. Collins said, this was just for informational purposes. I was charged with comparing and doing the best I could. 
given what we have done at Lehigh University and what has been successful. If any of you have planned a wedding, this is like planning a wedding for 6,000 people. You don't want to get it wrong. Um, you want it to be absolutely perfect for every single person that comes to that graduation. Um, it, it is very important to me to have that night, the best night, the most memorable night for both parents and students. Um, so I tried to do the best I could. So what questions can I answer? several questions. And that the heat index fact would have been helpful when we were talking about comparing turf to grass too. Um, I don't remember that one. That would have been, I think, helpful. Um, so we were ta you were talking about the pros and cons. Uh, the only pro I saw for having it here was that we could schedule the time. Um, I was surprised we didn't have any more pros for here in that comparison chart, because I could think of a lot of pros for having it here. I graduated on Poppy Odor Field, and um, we didn't have a backup plan inside. Um, Central Bucks, all of them graduate on their field. They don't have backup plans inside. Quakertown is on their turf, and they don't have backup plans inside that I'm aware of. Um, they have theirs on Saturday morning, which I think would be great, because then you don't have to worry about the heat as much. Um, but. You know, I think at probably close to 50% of the cost in here is that you are um, you're planning for two whole graduations to have it here. And I think that if we eliminated that backup option, either um, either with a with with a, a rain date or a guide, or looking at what the other districts are doing, um, you know that that would that would make a big difference. Um, when you look at the uh, cost for the food, um, I would think you'd be making a profit on the food. That's still counted. It says possible profit, but really that would just be evening out what the expenses were. And I would think that if you're buying $5,000 worth of food, we would probably be expecting we would sell $5,000 worth of food. So, you know, that's being added in there as a cost. The concession workers would probably be eliminated with, with that cost. Um, I have a question about the setup too. If, when, how far in advance do you think you would start setting up the chairs before graduation? Do you know? Do you know? Like, do you know how far in advance you would start doing that? Up on the field. You mean up on the field? Yes. Well, let me go back and answer the first a couple because you had a couple points in there. So, um, Quaker Town is having it at a location. Um, so they're not having it on on their field. Um, Central Bucks, they do, these schools do have backup plans in the event that it does rain. They do go inside and they do allow two tickets. Um, so I, I'm unaware of a school that has it outside that does not have a backup plan. Uh, at least that's been through my research. Um, so to, then to answer the, to address the concession stand, um, Gina Girantano with the, it was almost 5,000, you're right, almost 5,476 for the food that they would order. Um, with the cost to pay the workers and the manager, that was $506. So if they sold $5,000 worth of food, they would obviously make that back. So you're right, that would be a wash. Um, but you're absolutely right. When I went about this, I went, I attacked it as if we were up on the field, and it started to rain. As we know, June's weather is very unsettling. I would want, we would need to bring everybody inside. Um, and so I did have it set for, so for two different places. Um, furthermore, if we scheduled for, and I'm just picking dates out, June 12th and 13th, June 12th was the graduation, June 13th was the rain date, and it rained both of those days, it poured both of those days, we would need to, we would need to come inside. Um, we have, I have well over, Going to Lehigh University, I have 40 staff, 40, 40, 40 staff members beyond just the administrators that help with graduation and making it happen. So I would need um, those folks and more, plus all of those people, the fire police, etc. all those people would need to be scheduled and know in advance when they were going to work. I couldn't guarantee I, I couldn't say, oh, we'll just have it the nice night, next nice day because I need all those people schedules to be free to, to work, if that makes sense. The, the question about how, how far in advance do you think you'd be setting up the 
uh, audio speakers, the chairs, those kinds of things. How far before the graduation would you be setting all of that up? That's the day before. So by the day before, don't wouldn't we have a good enough indication of the weather that we could either put it in one place or another rather than setting it up both locations up if we weren't going to have a rain date? You know what I mean? Like setting it up in one or the other based on what the weather is supposed to be for that day? I would love to guarantee that, but based on Mother Nature and seeing how weather happens, I, I couldn't guarantee that. Okay, because I know some have had like delays too. Um, and then when you, you mentioned handicapped parking, couldn't we, that we have less handicapped parking, couldn't we rope off more parking? And I mean, handicapped parking is our parking, so we can make more handicapped spots if we want to. So we could easily expand what we're considering to be handicapped parking, right? We could, that's gonna deduct from the other parking for the community, the spectators and families. Um, and don't forget, I'm gonna have 600 students, even though I will encourage them not to drive here and get a ride here and be dropped off in the morning, I will still have students that will drive and park before the graduation so that they can leave right after graduation. Even though I would encourage them not to, I, it's, I can't monitor the parking lots um, for that, but it would, we, our parking lot is 1350, so that's that's not a lot of parking spots. Well, we have, but you have 24 security guards, so I'm sure one of them would be, would be checking the handicap spot, wouldn't they? Is that what you mean? Oh. Yeah, no, no, I'm not talking about the handicap spots. Oh. You're absolutely right. We could rope off more, and if we have 24 handicap spots, we could rope off and have 48 parking spots if we wanted to. But that will decrease the number of parking spots for other people attending the graduation. I was surprised to see restaurants, you know, places to eat. I mean, I feel like we have a lot of places to eat and that would benefit our, our local businesses as well. But um, so anyway, you know, those are my concerns with the chart itself. But for me, this isn't a financial decision. For me, this is more of a sentimental um, decision and, and what I hear from the community. I feel like this is the community's graduation and what I hear from a lot of people is that they want to bring it back to Penn Ridge, and it doesn't mean the same thing to them when they're driving to Lehigh to graduate as opposed to staying here in Penn Ridge and graduating here. So, um, so that's been my feeling. Did you have questions? Oh no, I just I had a thought earlier today about the parking, um, and so you said that it's thirteen fifty. Is that counting north? When you count, is that counting north and the high school? Okay. That's what I thought. But, um, and then as far as the, the students go, though, I thought if we have them right now, they come here and then they take a bus to Lehigh. So, you know, I, I wondered if maybe that could be something that we could do, have them park at Dibler or whatever the closest one is and use our buses to bring them over to the high school and then we would eliminate them from parking on our grounds. Um, and then just, you mentioned. Just keep in mind, I mean, I wouldn't have, unless it gets, just keep in mind the number of students. So mm -hmm. we have 575 students. Um, you know, Dyler doesn't have 575. Okay, yes, yeah, so no, I mean, it was just something that. that I was mm -hmm. wondering about earlier today. Um, maybe a different place has more parking spots. Dibler, I just was trying to think of the closest one. Um, and you did mention how we could have it at our own time if we wanted to have it here. Um, and then. I just was wondering if we, and this would be getting way ahead of ourselves, but some, if the decision were made to have it here at our school, then eventually maybe we would consider um, buying the chairs and, and the different things. Um, and the point about the, the protecting the turf, I don't, if everybody, everyone needs to remember that that's going to be brand new turf, right? We're getting our turf. I just want to remind everyone we're getting it replaced. So um, it is, we have a warranty on it, and to protect the warranty, it has to have that plywood on there. So, um, okay. And that was really all of the comments that I had, other than, um, you know, this would be, again, like Mrs. Baines Clement said, it's not really so much a financial decision, I think, for some people. It's more the, the sentimental decision. So we might have to accept that something would be more more money, so you'd have to be willing to accept that. But Bill, did you have any other? Yeah, I just have a couple of comments. First off, thank you for the thorough um, comparison. Uh, I really do appreciate it. 
Um, I think a couple of things. I've been to two graduations up at Stapler, and um, I've, I've never really found the Lower Salkin police very helpful in getting us out of there. It's a nightmare getting out of there. Not that it would be much better here. Um, you have that many people in one place, it's, it's going to be a nightmare. Um, but I think um, uh, that is what it is. Um, as far as parking, um, we have 11 buildings and we have 100 plus school buses. So um, I think that's something we, we could find a creative solution to, potentially. Just that's food for thought. And the only other comment I had was around the concessions. Um, if we're going to open up the concession stand, um, I've, I've never seen um, anybody operate at cost. So uh, I would assume that if we're spending almost $5,000 for food, we're going to at least double that uh, in, in uh, income. So we'll cover our cost and put another five in our pocket or defray some of the costs. So I've never seen food um, sold at cost. Typically, a water bottle is two to three dollars, and you pay pennies for it, right? So that was the number Gina Gerontana gave me. Um, and I'm going off of what she does, probably for all the football games and the snack and the and other events that she holds. So I can clarify that number with her. And that's, mm -hmm. But thank you. I appreciate the thoroughness that you've gone through. I had one couple of questions as well. Um, on the Lehigh side of your chart, was there, and there could be an I could have missed it, was there the expense cost for having the transportation up to Lehigh and the bus driver's wages? Yes, under the left hand side, um, right above the Lehigh grand total, it says transportation, so it cost us this year about $2,000 to run, the plus or minus, because we don't know yet what the number of buses that we'll need, but plus or minus $2,000 for us to go from Penridge High School to Lehigh University. And that includes wages for the bus drivers? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, my other thought was we do have our own buses, so we can, might talk to Faith Baptist about parking there, and that would add just another creative idea. I was thinking about I jotted down. Um, now, I graduated in 2009, so I graduated at Stabler, and I will attest that I wish I graduated at Bach Yoder. Um, but we had chairs for practice in the white gym anyway, so do we still have those chairs, or did we rent them regardless? So the chair rental, we rent the chairs for practice, so it should be on both sides? We do rent the chairs for practice. Um, yes, correct. And is that cost factored in on both sides or not? Well, it, that, that's a great question because that was the one, as I, I must have looked at this thing 15,000 times, um, that was the one thing that we, I did miss on the right hand side was the chair rental. Um, so not, I didn't, I didn't think it was fair for me to change that and add an additional, um, what I'm guessing would be about $3,500 based on what we currently use to, what we currently pay to rent the chairs. Um, so in essence, you could consider the $59,706 to be about $3,500 more, uh, but I didn't want to change that as I didn't think it was fair at this point. Okay. And then, and then my only other question was, is um, alcohol really a big factor for tailgating at a high school graduation? So, I'm, and you bring up another great question. So, it is, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, I don't mean Mr. Schoonover and Mr. Ott have been here for many years. Um, and Mr. Schoonover not want me to share how many years, but many years. They remember going and, and doing the graduations at Poppy Yoder. Um, and one of the things that they commented, and I know that when I had presented this two years ago, one of the things that repeatedly came up was the the when you go to Lehigh University, and I obviously have never been to a graduation at Poppy, but what was articulated was at Lehigh University, it's um, the feeling is much more, and I don't know if this is true, so for those of you who graduated, I apologize, I'm just sharing, um, that it's much more of a formal event, people come in, um, they come into the event, they go through the graduation, and then they leave. Um, whereas down at Poppy Yoder, um, and then the concern for many 
would be the tailgating that would take place prior to um, graduation here, you know, not necessarily on campus per se, but off campus. So there, there was clear memories of graduations at Poppy Yoder where people were escorted out, arrested, or just dealt with because they were under the influence because it's a much more relaxed, fun event versus a more formal event. Any other questions? Does anybody else have any? I have a question. I'm just wondering, you um, you talk about handicap parking. Is there do you know is there a difference in the number of handicap seats or are they the same? Or is that not a factor because uh, people will just sit where they can, it's not Yeah, that's a great uh, we don't have to <coughs> handicap up the stadium. I don't think we you know Well there's some areas for yeah, wheelchairs. So, so we guess. would use those, right? We didn't even investigate that. That's a good point. Okay. I guess it's not re it's it would depend on the handicap and what type of seat they needed. Right. So. That's why I didn't have any other questions. I think people asked a lot of questions. So. Yeah. Because that would be up on the stadium, and then you have the live feed into the auditorium for, if we had to come inside, we'd have to have a live feed in the auditorium while the event's going on in the gym. So that 12,000 is to set up on the two places, right, in case of rain. And then if we had to come inside for rain and a student could take only one parent into the white gym, the other parent or guest would go into the auditorium where the live feed from the green gym would be going, white gym would be happening in the auditorium. I only have one other um, question or comment, if you will. I seem to recall when the stadium was built up there, and we spent a lot of money up there, that one of the selling points was that we could hold graduation there. So I'm kind of curious why we're back to debating where we're going to have graduation. I wasn't here when they put the stadium up. I was here when the bleachers went in. Um, so I can't speak to what was discussed then. Um, I was asked to share a cost comparison, cost analysis, and, and that's what you have. So um, I'll wait for direction. I just have one more question. Have we done a student survey as to where they would prefer graduation? No, we have not. It, I, this was this was the first step in the process. Okay. See, yeah, um, that's what I would like to just you know we've asked a lot of questions yep. and I think really to limit it, to, I don't want it to snowball into right. kind of getting into recommendations and whatever because I think that a decision like this is something that does require input from the community. I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but um, if you were to do something like this, certainly people would want to be heard about it. And that would be something that I would like to see done, is to have the community be able to give their input on it. Um, but the other thing, when you mentioned that Central Bucks has the two tickets if they move it indoors, do you, are they able to have somewhere where two, pe two parents are able to sit and the students? in their schools? Without looking at my notes, because I have a huge file of, of every school that I spoke to, so I don't remember which CB school it was, um, but yes, they do. They, they're able to bring in two people. And it's just, unfortunately, our venue does not permit 600, well, it would be 600 students on the floor, plus the stage for the ceremony, um, plus the extra seats for the teachers that are monitoring the students that are on the floor. Um, and then with the bleachers pulled out, it, uh, I think it's only like 780 people can sit in the bleachers. And that's the only location inside that I could do the graduation. Can you, do you know, what, what did they used to do when the graduation was at Papier? Because we didn't have a location to bring it inside. So what was the plan B then? I'm going to defer because... Green Gym, I graduated there. Did you? I'm probably the yeah. only one that has done it, 1996. Wow. Um, and it was 
two tickets in there, and it was simulcast in the CAF, and the classrooms, and the old. Well, that's a pretty good track record for Poppy Odor, then, if that's the only time it ever happened, right? Well, I don't know. Like, I don't, oh, I don't know how many times it's been. Years. Is that your question? How many times No, I, I didn't know what the backup plan was. Oh. Because no. no, I've never heard of using one. Well, I can say my son graduated in 2005 under the threat of a thunderstorm, and we had to rush through it. And I had my handicapped daughter, and we were like halfway, we were afraid to sit down too far, so it was a mess. It was a mess. And it was scary. It was a dark, threatening, thundering. Yeah, and we there was no backup plan that night. It was do it quick and get the heck out. I was 92, and it was at Puppy Odor, and it was very hot. And I know they had to bring in a lot of medical people because people were passing out. Okay, so I think at this point, what I would like to suggest, since it is 8 o'clock, um, is can we have, like we do with the budget, how we put this online for people to look at um, and maybe have some of the, I don't know if you could do the questions, Dr. Price, I should have asked you that beforehand, to, to note down some of the different points that were made or questions that were asked. And I have some notes here too if you need help. But if we could provide this information somewhere easy to access for people so the public can look at it um, just so they can all you know everybody that's not here does watch the video <coughs> they can have that information um, and then you know I, I think everybody knows we're in the process of hiring a new superintendent and so you know obviously I don't think a decision like this would happen before that person um, eventually would come on board so this isn't going to be a decision made overnight, and I think if we could share the information with the public as much as possible, that would be helpful. But for tonight, I think this conversation, yeah, I think we've had a good discussion, and um, we should probably wrap it up. And I, just, oh, if you don't mind, I just wanted to ask a clarifying question about the chairs, if that's okay. Go ahead. Um, so you said that you, it just wasn't clear about the, the chair rental for the, the practice day. Is it in the Lehigh numbers and not in the other one, or it's not in either one? So the numbers for the chairs, it is in the Lehigh one because it's part of our invoice. So actually, if you look on, would be, well, yours is a little bit different than mine. It's under the miscellaneous graduation expenses. The chairs for practice is 1,026, and that's chairs for practice that we set up in the white gym for graduation practice. Um, and we would move that, but it's not over on the right hand side. Um, we added additional because for practice we just put enough chairs out for the kids, not the teachers, um, the ceremony, etc. So we bumped it the number up a little bit. But wouldn't it be the same chairs that you're setting up anyway for the, for the two ceremonies? Wouldn't it be this? The same I'd have to, but I'd have to double it because I'd have to have it up at this um, Helmet Field as well. As, as in the gym. But wouldn't you be doing that anyway? I mean, if you're, if you're setting up for two places, wouldn't they be, wouldn't they be there? <coughs> yes, yes, they would be. So if, it, if, if graduation practice is at Hellman Field, I'd have two setups. Um, if we stay at Lehigh, I just need the, the rentals for that one day. Um, so you're saying it would be more because the rental would be over two days or an extra day? And I'd have double the amount of chairs. Why wouldn't you just have the practice on the field instead of in the weight gym? Because I would have two setups in the event of rain. Right. It, it just seems to me that may, maybe the chairs it would be this like there wouldn't be an additional chairs. But I'm not sure. So if so if it's at so at Lehigh <coughs> University, we rent chairs to go through the practice. So we rent uh, 600 chairs in the white gym to run through graduation practice the day before graduation. Right. That's Lehigh. If we were going to have graduation at Hellman Field, I would need to have. 600 plus chairs on the field, and I would need to have 600 chairs in the building in the event we're up on the field, and as Mrs. Miller said, we needed to run inside for a rain delay or a rain issue, and we could continue the graduation inside. So I'd have to have, instead of just 600 chairs, I'd have to have 1,200 chairs. But you have them already included. So. I have it included on the, on the Lehigh side, on the Hellman side, it was missed. It was missed. So in, in essence, the cost would go up a little bit. Okay. And my other thought is maybe just so there's no debate about food and how much food sells for is maybe to remove the food items. I don't, 
I don't know, it's just a suggestion so that there's no... We, we questioned how we would make the food, the concession stand work, um, you know, whether we'd have kids sell it or we'd have, you know, we would defer to our, our um, nutritional services. Um, and again, just for purposes of the analysis, we went directly through Gina G. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. There are no other comments. And that brings us to public comment. Um, so, Carol Miller. So just a reminder, you state your name and your municipality. Hi, my name is Carol Miller. I'm from Bedminster. And I wanted to segue in because one of your comments was regarding were any of the students surveyed. That's the reason I'm here tonight. Both my sons attend the high school right now, and um, they were very concerned about the graduation ceremony being moved to the field here at the high school. Um, we have an extended family. It's very difficult for them to select who would be able to attend if we do not have that full amount. I went online today just to research a little bit, and I have attended Central Bucks' graduation. Last year, it was horrifically hot. They had to pass out water to all of the students on the field because they were dropping. It was that hot. Um, many of the elderly had to be moved into the auditorium so that they could at least watch it. So they still had the telecasting going on while the ceremony was still outside on the field. Central Bucks does it a little bit differently because there's three um, buildings and the superintendent needs to rotate to each one of them, so they try to get them done in one, in one night. I also am a teacher at Happel Horsham, and Happel Horsham does have a backup plan. I have um, three siblings who are also educators. They all have backup plans. You have to do that. As Ms. Devona had just um, <coughs> indicated, it is a double expense. When I went on to do a little research, um, I found many of the places that do house outside of their field are in um, many of the, I guess, the uh, urban areas because of the location and the, and the facility sizes that they have to accommodate people. I feel in Penridge we're very fortunate to be so close to Stabler that we have that option to be able to provide to our students. Um, I also looked online to see what would you consider to be 10 no's that you don't want to have at graduation. Um, one of them was obviously to keep the speeches to a minimum. Um, another one said, don't clap until everybody's name is read. Things that we've already done. But um, the third one was, um, don't make speeches about how great and special your school is. Make it about the students. And I think that's what we need to focus in on here when you make your decision. It's not about our memory of how it should have been. It's how they want it to be. And the last thing was, don't make it too hard to get tickets. This is their opportunity to shine. We are one of the few districts where we don't do a formalized fifth grade promotion ceremony or an eighth grade transition program. We have some type of awards programs, but we don't have a graduation. This is their culminating moment. They've worked 12 years, and I think they're entitled to have all of their family members present. And I think we need to focus on the students here. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And um, the next person I have is Jennifer Cole. Did Jennifer stay? Oh, she left. Oh, okay, sorry. So, is there anyone who didn't sign up for public comment? Okay. You're one. Come on down. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Dearborn. I'm from Bedminster. Um, so I've lived in Pembridge my whole married life here with my children. I have two children that have graduated just recently. They've just finished their sophomore years in college. They're twins. And um, I was just remembering about like the whole Lehigh thing, and that was my one and only experience. I have a junior here right now. He's gonna. He's looking forward to it. And um, one of the things that both of my kids said, my older ones. They actually loved getting on the bus here and taking the bus up to Lehigh because they were like, we hadn't been on the bus since like kindergarten, you know, like elementary school, and it was like a whole fun, reminiscing kind of thing. Like they really enjoyed the whole being with their friends, getting to where they're going. Um, 
they, they enjoy that whole experience. So don't think that the bus is a deterrent. I mean, from what I've understood from them and their friends, that was actually a pretty cool experience for them. Um, and then just the more obvious things, you know, I have a, a father who's got a heart, he has a heart condition. For him to sit outside in heat for several hours to hear all of those kids' names read, that would be a burden to him and, and a, you know, health factor to him. And I'm a nurse, there's a lot of people that have those health issues that asthma, you know, it's what, depending on what the weather is. I mean, the air conditioning at Lehigh is a huge, huge plus. Um, going in knowing you're going to get a seat, that's awesome. Um, I have a friend whose kids go to Springford last year, they got rained out. They got one ticket to get into the auditorium. Everybody else got to sit in the classroom and watch it on TV. I don't know. You know, how do you decide, does mom or dad go? You know what I mean? Like, we both, well, mom, probably. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Like, how, how fair is that to the other parent and this, uh, the grandparents and whoever else goes to, like, watch it on TV? I know Stabler's big, but you can see them, and it's, it's just personal, and it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool experience. So I would just like to make it know that this community member and her family, and from what I've spoken to the other people, we would prefer to stay with Lehigh. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Hi, I'm Jackie Fruit. I'm from Dublin Borough. And um, I would just kind of like to say the same thing along the same lines as Kathy said. I've had two children graduate at Lehigh, and to be quite honest with you, when I first moved here, I thought it was a little odd. I thought, oh my gosh, I have to go the whole way to Allentown. Are you kidding me? It was, it was a fantastic experience. You have plenty of time to get there. It's easy to get to. My parents can come. Um, you know, you are dealing with the community now. Um, I'm a transplant. We have a lot of transplants now. My parents come from Harrisburg. Um, if I brought my parents in from Harrisburg and they had to sit in a classroom to watch them on TV, I, I, that would be horrible. Um, so, you know, I think there's a lot of other considerations. Um, and if you go to a Lehigh, I don't know if all of you have been to graduation at Stabler, but it is a really nice event. And I think even in the last couple of years, um, some of the event has been a little bit shortened. It's, it's just been a, it's a really nice event. And I think the kids love to see the video. Um, it's, everything's clear, you can't get a bad seat there, and it's, it's very comfortable. Um, Kathy was talking about her father. I would have the same concern. I don't even know if my dad could walk up to the field. Um, so just some thoughts. Um, I, I, I just think you know, dealing with putting together community events and knowing what happens when it rains and when you have to deal with weather. We just had the musical here a couple nights ago. We had no air conditioning. I stood out in the hallway with an older woman who missed her grandchild's performance because she couldn't sit in there. Now we're talking about the same thing possibly for graduation. I think you really do have to consider you're dealing with the elements, and, and I'm sure that was a great thing. I love that field. I mean, I've gone to a million sporting events up there. I love it. I think it would be great if it all worked perfectly. But as we've seen this whole year, Mother Nature doesn't always treat us as well as we would like. So I really think um, having a stapler is, is just Better already. Thank you. Thank you. Just state your name and My name is Chuck Weaver, Township. Uh, I think one of the things I took from tonight, and I'm an adult, I've had uh, experience at Stabler. Uh, it rained. It was tough, tough to get in and out of. There, there's drawbacks on either, and there's advantages on, on either. Um, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more on the fiscal end because it's kind of hard there, so I do ask that that get put out there that we can see publicly. But I think the kids that are seniors should have a huge say in this because this is their graduation. Um, I think we're a bunch of adults here, and we know what we might like, but I really think they should have a say. And I've been in this auditorium when they've had saves on other issues here recently. And um, I think they should have a voice. And I think we need to listen to that voice and take that into consideration uh, in addition to what we think and um, what we think our family thinks and all the other things because this is our one chance to uh, have that opportunity. And I think as a board and as a uh, community, this is a very proper way to allow them to express what their feelings are because it's their graduation. Thank you. 
Would anyone else like to come? Oh, okay. And then you'll be next. Okay. Hi, I'm Donna Kaiser. Um, I'm from Percocy. Um, my, I agree with him that this student should have a say. I know a lot of students probably would like it at the high school because it's more sentimental. I talked to my daughter about it. But they need to know the facts. Give them the numbers. Let them know that if it goes inside, they can take one parent. That grandparents have to sit in another room. Um, in a couple years, you have the next class, which are the, or the freshmen. They're huge. That is a huge group of kids. They won't even fit in the white gym. They won't. They'll, they'll have to be separated, separated graduations. And you got to ask them what's more important, being together or being at the, at the, the helm and field. And the kids, they do, should have a say, but make sure you give them the facts, all of them. One parent if it rains, ten uh, eight tickets at Hellman, and then the parking and all that stuff, and then also give them the facts that if it's a stapler, they can have ten people. You know, both grandparents on each side, and all their siblings. I mean, if it, if it rains and they can take one parent, they gotta choose between parents. Their siblings can't even watch. And if it's, a, if it's your first child graduating, that's very important to you as a parent, to see your first child graduate. And I gotta go sit in another room? No, that's, that's, not, that's not right. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Evan Brooks. I am a uh, senior here at Penridge High School, um, municipalities uh, Bedminster. So, I do not speak on behalf of all the students, but me included when it comes down to uh, almost 100% of the other students that I've talked to would not want it here at the field. Uh, due to logistics and what I've seen tonight due to economic concerns. Uh, more expensive does not necessarily mean better. Um, when it comes down to people with heart conditions, I actually have a heart condition, I have a pacemaker as well. So uh, when it comes down to stuff like that, I would be concerned because, you know, stuff can happen with weather. And I've heard uh, stories of it getting rained out and obviously stuff like this. I do have an extended family as well. Uh, my grandparents and my mother would not be too happy if they couldn't uh, see me walk up. Um, <coughs> and when it comes down to it, uh, the just going with sen sentimentality does not necessarily cut it. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, really do like the sentimental stuff and um, me personally, I've been here my entire life. I've been here, well, I, I've gone to the school my entire life. I've gone through kindergarten, uh, Bedminster Elementary School, North Middle School, and now uh, the high school here. And when it comes down to it, riding that bus, our school bus, up to Lehigh, which is not all that far away, uh, to have, to be assured that all my family will be there in a well-conditioned building, even if it's not the building that I've gone to school for for the uh, past four years. I would rather have Lehigh. I would rather have that compared to uh, the risk and the possibility of uh, not everybody being able to enjoy the event. Uh, thank you. Jamie West, East Rock Hill. Um, I do just want to say I get sentimental, you know, being, I've lived here my whole life except for leaving for four years for college. I get sentimental. I love that and part of me is like, yes, let's bring it back to Hellman. But being that class, I'll tell you right now, my graduation was horrible. It was a horrible experience. I hate that I have the memory that I had to be in the green gym 
And, you know, it was only that day, and it was pouring that whole day, our practice was there, that. You know, we told our, my rest of my family to only even come, and only my parents were here that day, because we got two tickets in the green gym, the old, you know, how you had the above seating, too, and if you ever were in the old gym, and having the look down there. Um, it was a horrible experience, you know, being there, because everyone was angry to be here, and I would hate to have students, you know, of mine now have that, too, to be stuck in a gym, to be here, you know, you wait for that graduation, and honestly, I didn't even want to go to graduation that night. After practice and knowing it all, I literally wanted to not go and just I'll show up the next morning and get my diploma because it wasn't a very good graduation. You know, I've been to plenty of Lehigh, I've been plenty to Hellman, you know, I've been on both. So take that into consideration that yes, it's great to have the sentimental at Hellman, but it's nice knowing when your graduation is, there's no possibility that you're going to be in a gym graduating and have that experience at least at Lehigh and not have that horrible memory forever being stuck in a gym here because it wasn't fun. And yes, they did have time class throughout and, and hearing all that, that I don't know how many classes have done it before me. I know in the last 35 years, 96 was the only one. And just so you know and are aware, you do have a board member that you could talk to, Dr. Yarnell, his son graduated with me, so he has been and experienced a graduation in a gym. I know his daughter graduated on the field, so if you want some perspectives with someone who has been, I know he's been to the Lehigh many times too. He's had all three, so you have a board member you can get some information from also, just to let you know since he's not here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, before we adjourn the meeting, um, would anybody have an objection to, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of um, the spreadsheet that you have, Ms. Devona, and wondering if there, if we should provide that, but also something that's a bit more concise, um, like that has a summary that's maybe more easily readable to people, to have both of those with maybe the highlights of the, the number of tickets and you know, I guess the major concerns. My my concern is that it's a little bit. It is a little bit hard to read, um, and so I don't want to not have that information. But I thought, do we have something in addition to your spreadsheet? So for purposes of cost analysis, I tried to break it down as as clearly as I could. I mean, just so that you yeah. can see left left and right. Um, I'll talk to Dr. Price tomorrow. What I can do is, is take the major concerns and some of the things that you heard this evening, um, you know, some of the positives that were also brought up, um, and, and, and provide that to Dr. Price and let him share that with you. And if that's something that you want to share out, that's, or if you want me to add something else, I'll do that as well. I can't think of anything, you know, board members, if there's something that you want included in, you know, on the website, then, I mean, I would say, you know, to email that and we can provide it to Dr. Price and Ms. DeBona within a reasonable amount of time, maybe the next couple of days. Um, but again, I mean, I don't want to not provide all the information you shared. I would just like, I think it would be good to have two versions so people can have all of the information and then an abridged version um, that hits the highlights. With the pros and the cons, though. Yes, please. Okay. There's no other comments. Um, we will adjourn the activities meeting and move into the policy meeting.